Praise the Lord. It's good to be online with everyone. Our God is good. I hope we got a huge crowd of millions of viewers. <laughs> All right. So as we get into the praise and worship portion of the church service, the word of the Lord tells us, watch this. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath Praise the Lord. Then he ends with praise ye the Lord. And on that, how about lifting up your hands to the Lord and praising and blessing his holy name. Father, we thank you, dear God, for you are kind and you are awesome. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory for your goodness. And God, we honor you because you are the king. You are the creator of all things. And we thank you. We salute you tonight. We praise you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters. And over in the comment section, there is a link where you can give. And remember, all Christians faithfully and consistently pay their tithe and gladly give in the offering as unto the Lord. As the Bible says, will a man rob God, right? Robbery is what? A sin, right? Will a man rob God? The children of Israel said, Wherewith, wherewith have we robbed thee? Isn't it amazing how people don't know when they sin, right? He said, in your tithe and in your offering. People are still the same, right? Where have we robbed you? All right, so let's be a blessing in the giving and in the offering. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for this time of giving, this time of giving back. And Father, we ask that you would bless both the gift and the giver according to their giving in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, we are, again, we do appreciate your giving. Y'all know what we're trying to do. And uh, let's be faithful to that. And, 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 uh, and I appreciate Sister Barbara Sears, her faithfulness in giving and offering, Sister Brittany, and, uh, and various ones who have, who have been supporting the work of God and, and many others, some, or some others. And so let's get on board and let's be givers. Let's give to the work of God, okay? Because the work of God cannot go on without an operations cost, right? An operational cost, I should say. So let's give. And the goal is to get into a building, okay? And also, um, we have an announcement. I think it's going to be Friday where we're going to have Zoom meeting. But we're going to go ahead and get on into the message. Shout out to all of y'all. I'm hoping that Renata is online with us. Want to say hello to you. I'm hoping that you're online. I'm hoping that Be Smooth is online with us tonight and um, various others. And and um, and we're praying for everyone, okay? All right, we're going to go ahead and get it started because a lot of times people don't have the patience to wait. So And we're not really editing anything at this moment. So we want to go ahead and get started and get on into uh, what the Word of God says. Out of the book of Exodus chapter 18. The book of Exodus chapter 18. We're going to hit around chapter 18, verse 18 through 20. Exodus chapter 18, verse 18 through 20. All right. Amen. Well, that's fine. We'll start with this. This is not up there. But I want to, I want to bring this out. It's in really verse 17, just for clarity. Verse 17 through 20, okay? Then, then it's going to kick off in verse 18. All right. The Bible says, uh, Sterling, can you do me a favor? Can you? The Bible says, And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee. 
for this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to God word, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. All right? And I want to I wanna bring for emphasis, and I'm going to talk about the whole, try to kind of deal with the whole deal here. But if you notice in verse 19 through 20, listen to this golden nugget, y'all. Listen to this. It says, hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee what? Counsel. And God shall be with thee. But thou for the people to God, be thou for the people to God word, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way where it in they must walk and the work that they must do. And with the help of the Lord on victory night, brothers and sisters, and I really just want to be an, an absolute help to you. I really want to be a blessing to you tonight and not because of me, of, of who I am, but because really because of who he is, right? God wants to be a blessing to us tonight. And listen to the title of the message, y'all. The title of the message is Called to Plan. Listen to it. Called to Plan. And with the, so we want to talk about this. And the purpose of worship service. Yes, we come to worship God, right? But also we are here to be served from God. God is here to speak to our hearts and deal with us. God is going to go to work for us tonight to guide us and give us some more clarity on some things. All right. Again, and to God be all of the glory because of who he is. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for this Bible study. Father, we ask that this word would penetrate hearts. And God, you know exactly where we are tonight. Allow your still small voice in the case that I may be out in left field, but allow your still small voice to prick and to guide and to deal with people who you care about. No doubt you care about the listeners. No doubt you care about those who have taken the time to have church online in this awkward situation. Dear God, in this awkward situation that the nation has gone into, but God, we ask you to move regardless of the barrier of video. We ask you to move in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all. Call to plan. Hmm. Brothers and sisters, faith is not crossed fingers. Some people's faith is crossed fingers, right? This is as much faith as they have. They serve God with crossed fingers. They go through their day with crossed fingers. They go through their weeks with crossed fingers, right? They go through their months and their whole brand new year that God has given them with crossed fingers, brothers and sisters. And faith is not crossing your fingers hoping. Faith is not crossing your fingers wishing, wishing and hoping that something will fall out of the sky, a mir miraculous thing will fall out of the sky, right? But a great aspect of faith is, it is this. It is substance, not good luck. Faith is substance, not good luck. Faith is substance that or that's ordained, prepared, or well planned out. Faith is substance that's ordained, prepared, or well planned out. Brothers and sisters, when we come to God and we get to knowing the Lord, 
we're going to meet the God that's a God of plan. And brothers and sisters, you and I, having this holy God on our side, knowing this holy God in the reality, one attribute that we should have uh, in our life from God is uh, to be planners. It's one thing to have knowledge, but it's another thing to have foreknowledge. And Moses had knowledge. Moses had a walk with God. Moses was living doubtlessly in the present as we see in the word of God here. But one thing that Moses needed was someone else who was looking outside of him. Moses here in the scripture, he was a, a, a lot of people. I mean, he was guiding, I believe it was somewhere around 700,000 to a million people. He was guiding uh, these people and these people were bringing to Moses uh, their problems and everything, and he would take them to God and try to find answers uh, uh, from God. He was the judge uh, of that time. Really, Moses was the first judge of Israel. And so uh, Moses would judge these people day and night, 24 hours, right? He had knowledge. Yes, he had wisdom, but one thing he was lacking here, he was lacking foreknowledge and faith in its greatest form, faith in its most powerful form, faith in its greatest strength is faith that can see through things, faith uh, that has foreknowledge of which Moses at this time was lacking. And Jethro, his father-in-law, saw what was going on, brothers and sisters. He saw because of the fact that God was able to deal with Jethro. God dealt with Jeth Jethro. And, and Jethro was able to see how Moses was getting worn out because Moses was not a, 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 was getting really about to get introduced to, um, to uh, uh, rather Moses was about to get introduced through Jethro by God about planning because we are called to plan. Faith in his most powerful form is a faith that plans. Listen to me, y'all. I'm not trying to trying to step on toes, but what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to help us to come up higher in God. You need to see the reality of this stuff, right? I have to have the reality. You have to have the reality. Again, faith, faith works most powerful, providing when it provides foreknowledge. And Moses needed to be able to see. Yes, it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3, just to verify um, this, is it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the substance of things hoped for. Here's the point I want to draw out. The evidence of things not seen. It is the evidence of things not seen. It says, for by it, the elders obtained a good report. It said, through faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear, right? The Lord planned it out before he spoke it. God knew what he was doing, and he could see it before it appeared. Faith can see it before it happens. Faith will plan it out. We'll, uh, uh, we'll see the goal and plan it out and work steadily toward it until it, until it, it, it comes into existence. Faith, true faith in its greatest sense, brothers and sisters, is foreknowledge, preordained plans. Right. God uh, preordained the plan of salvation for mankind. And so Moses uh, needed this foreknowledge, brothers and sisters, or else he would have failed. He would have failed. And God is a God of foreknowledge, of foreknowledge. Faith is the substance that, that's ordained, prepared or well planned out ordained, prepared, or well-planned out. 
The Lord does not go uh, wander around without a plan. God does not live or live with his fingers crossed. And God does not expect us to live like this unless we're playing a game. You know, <laughs> you know, the kids sometimes play a game. It, it, so, so you won't be it. I don't know what that means or whatever. They touch you. You got to <laughs> cross your fingers, right? So Moses needed a plan. He needed something to happen. And so the so Jethro began to give him the plan. We're called the plan. Here in the word of the Lord, the Bible says, uh, here he said, hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel. I'm going to give you a plan and God shall be with you. He said, be thou for the people of God word. In other words, you're going to mediate between the people of God, the people in God that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And then he said, and thou shalt teach them what? Ordinances and law. You're going to teach them the plan of God right now and shall show them the way therein they must walk and the work that they must do. Because without the ordained uh, plan of God, without the law, without guidance, these people will, will, will be walking around faithless. They'll be walking around in unbelief. They'll be walking around with no direction as far as the things of God are concerned. They'll walk around confused. They'll walk around lost. They'll walk around in the wilderness not knowing why they are out there. He said to him, uh, you're going to teach the people ordinances. Listen to my counsel. Listen to my plan. And what you need to do is set up judges over the people. You need to set up judges over the people and let the judges underneath you handle the small matters right and he said and when and when uh the bigger matters that they cannot handle they can bring them to you a well thought out thought, thought out plan that causes Moses uh, to be able to relax and have peace and that faith worked that faith caused Moses to be a successful leader. That faith uh, caused him to be able to walk with God with clarity, right? And Moses understood at this time the power of foreknowledge. Knowledge is cool. Wisdom is great. But boy, foreknowledge is really great because faith can see it. And faith can see how it can happen and faith can understand that this thing is going to come to pass because I see the plan of God in it. You can't wander around with your fingers crossed. You have to plan to win each day with God. You got to set yourself up in heart to win. The best time to pray is before your day starts. Not after your day started, not after your day gets started, because uh, more than likely, more than likely, uh, we're going to be wandering aimlessly. You make yourself solid and I make myself solid in the Lord. Anyone makes them themselves solid in God when they come to God before the day starts. Instead of coming to God after the state, the day starts, right? It causes us to put God first. It causes us to reflect on the things of God. It causes us to connect to the Lord. It causes us to be supernaturally powerful. You would not believe, a lot of people would not believe all of the sins that they would not commit if they would just start off with a plan with God. A plan. The word says where no counsel is, the people fall. Listen to that. Take that part out. Where no counsel is, the people fall. That is just the law. That's the way things work, the natural law of nature. You can't go around with your fingers crossed, right? It says without counsel, purposes are disappointed. Goals and achievements, things you're trying to do, they are disappointed. Going around with fingers crossed is not faith. Yes, it's not faith, brothers and sisters. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 18 says, Every purpose is established by counsel, and with good advice, make war. With good advice, make war. Jesus said, what king is it that uh, he knows that a war is about to come, 
does not count the cost and finds out if he can afford to fight this war. And, and if he can't, he, sent, he sends his ambassadors out there to try to make peace instead of trying to make war. As far as God is saying the way Jesus in the attitude and in the spirit that he said it, it makes no sense to make war and there's no plan. Because foreknowledge comes to plan. You have to plan and you have to work the plan, right? Moses went in walking in the plan that Jethro gave him. This was that Moses uh, that was able to see God face to face. This was that Moses that had right now knowledge, right now wisdom, and right now understanding. But he was humble enough. He did not get his. He did not get bent out of shape because he knew it was wearing him out. A life that's not planned out is a life that's getting worn out. A life that's not planned out in God is a life that's on its way to losing out with God. You have to plan to win. And I almost titled this message, Plan to Win. And that's the way that it is, right? Cross fingers, good luck, rabbit's foot, Jesus is, or what, crosses on the necklaces, paying a, a tithe in the name of getting a blessing from God, fasting in the name of getting a blessing from God. All of this stuff uh, uh, that in, in a way is borderline witchcraft. We need to walk with God. We need to believe on Jesus. We need to believe in the Lord. And we need to plan with God. He said, I give you wisdom. He said, from heaven, if any man, if any man lacketh wisdom, what did he say? Let him ask of the Lord who giveth wisdom to all men and upbraideth not. And what does he expect you to do with the wisdom? Really, that wisdom is foreknowledge. Isn't that powerful? To be able to see through things, to be able to see your way. God wants us to have our God eyes on, right? He wants us to have our God mind, our God hearts. Why? Because we're called to plan. We're called to call on the, the name of the Lord Jesus for wisdom. He has been made wisdom for us, right? He is the wisdom of God. The, uh, he is our righteousness. He's our blessing. And we have the mind of Christ so that we can have foreknowledge. Foreknowledge. Lord, I see what Satan is trying to do. Lord, I understand and I discern that out. And so I'm going to move in this direction. Lord, I'm going to think and I'm going to allow you to touch my heart. I'm going to walk with you, God. I will write it down. I will uh, pray to you with pen and pad to see what you would have me to do. I will live holy. I will walk up rightly before you, and you're going to give me answers. You're going to give me the foreknowledge so that I will know what to do. You can't walk around. I got faith and got your hands over your eyes, but I believe God. He said, get, he said open up your eyes. Anoint thine eyes with with uh, with holy eye salve, so that thou mayst be able to see. He said, "Add to your faith what virtue and knowledge and all this good stuff." And he said, "And he that adds not to his faith is what blind and cannot see afar off. He cannot see and has forgotten." that he has been washed in the blood of God because he don't appreciate or she doesn't appreciate the blood of God. Or they let down the holy standard and they walk around with their fingers crossed going, I believe. And that is not faith. Faith plans it out and goes into action and makes it happen. You got to have a plan. Yes, it is foreknowledge. The evidence of things not seen. Noah had the plans to build the boat, right? Noah had the plans to build the boat. Just as Joshua had the plans to shout down the walls of Jericho. Joshua had to come back with another plan to take down Ai. 
because he went out there against Ai without a plan. And what happened? There was sin in the camp. He did not seek God out. And he said, why did we fall? Because you did not plan it out with God. And, and if we make our war without plans, we all fall. The whole church fails. We're asking for failure. Joshua had the plan. Gideon, there was a plan. God said, the ones that lap it up like a dog, I believe it was. He said, he said, keep them. Keep the ones that's looking around when, they, when they're drinking that water. But those who stick their face down in the crying water and they ain't looking around, he said, tell them to go home if I get it correctly. God wanted people who are alert like birds. He said, bring the number down. Those who are fearful, it was the plan of God. God planned that war out with Gideon. And he said, 300 of you. And you need, a, you need a set a group over here on one side, a group over there on another side, on the north side, on the east side, on the west side, and on the south side. And he said, uh, when that enemy comes, I want you to break your lamp. You're going to have some lamps. I want you to break them. And it made a, a loud noise. And the enemy was frightened. And it seemed like it was more than 300. It seemed like it was, a, it felt, they heard the sound. And they began to praise the name of God. And 300 men chased out, chased off thousands of men. Because of a God plan, Gideon had a plan. It was all planned out. Every war, David had a plan. He knew what general to set where. He knew exactly what he was doing. That's faith, brothers and sisters. That is faith. Faith can see it. Faith can feel it. Faith can just taste it. And when you can taste it and feel it in your spirit, I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the flesh. I'm talking about in spirit, in heart, and in mind. In looking at things objectively, seeing it for what it is, you can straight up, just straight pick it apart with the power of the mind of God. You can pick anything apart with the power of God, anything. We're made in the image of God, brothers and sisters. We're made in the image of God, saved by the blood of the Lamb, right? We are called to plan. And they just kept on planning. All the way up to the New Testament, they were planning. Uh, Gabriel came down to Mary with a plan. Gabriel went over to Elizabeth with a plan. And Jesus had a plan all the way to the cross. It was all planned out. And let me tell you something else. The enemy fights with a plan. So why would we not plan it all out? Because as one man told me, this man that loves me, he said, prior planning prevents poor performance. It's a prevention. Prior planning planning is that ounce that is worth a pound of cure. Just one ounce. They said more bounce to the ounce, right? There you go. More bounce to the ounce when you plan. You want more bounce to the ounce, right? Sterling, you don't know about more bounce to the ounce, do you? You know about more? You the preacher kid. You ain't supposed to know. It's because of me. Well, You can use the things. <laughs> I'm having fun now. And like I'm at home, right? More bounce to the ounce. When you plan, you'll figure it out. And you can win every time. You can walk with God. You can know Jesus. You can love God with all of your heart, all of your might, all of your soul with a plan. All planned out, right? Put forth the effort. Change this year. Plan it out. Because brothers and sisters, if you want to win, you got to want to win for God. We got to want to go to heaven, right? We got to want to make it all the way to glory, right? Somebody put a funny comment up there. Ah, oh, she did. Well, 
Well, Sister Davis is a blessing, isn't she? But we got a plan, and we plan to win, right? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Plan it out. Can, can, we, can we tonight? Here's the question, though. I'm going to end with this. I'm going to end with you. In, in with you like this. When are you going to do it? Is this a procrastinate, another thing to push off that God wants us to do? Is it, is it another thing to lay aside that God wants us to do? And I told you something not too long ago. Some people are like this. If God told them to sit down, they'll stand up. All of a sudden, they'll feel like standing up. And if, and if God told them to stand up, all of a sudden, their knees are aching and they'll sit down. You know why they like that? Because of who said to stand up and who said to sit down. They just want to do things their way. But God, the command of God, brothers and sisters, listen to me, is to plan. That's it. It's to plan. And, and really, we sin against ourselves and we sin against God when we don't plan. So when are we going to use the tool? When are we going to do it? When are we going to make it happen? When are we going to go deep so we, that we can have a testimony of loyalty to our God instead of a testimony of, you know, uh, uh, of a bunch of jibber jabber? We need real talk, real life. We need to have salt in our salvation. We need to, our salvation needs to be powerful. It needs to be powerful, brother, brothers and sisters, and it only gets powerful when we act like God in plan. Let us bow our heads in reverence to the Lord. I love the mess out of you. Hey, I love, me love you muchísimo. I love you for real. All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, dear God, for your mercy and your grace. Dear Lord, we ask that you would continuously move in the midst of the church. And God, let us go forward in you and stay steady on the goal for January the 31st. And I praise you and I honor you, Father. And we can do this. We can do the impossible through you, through plan. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, may God bless you real good. We love you, okay? God bless for real.